now on Eat the Drivers. No other show in the world that allows you to invest into startups. Hard work and effort. $1,000. 350000 Something similar for non-traditional games. We'll probably reach for our phones. Sunny Sick. That we've never seen something like this before. How do you see yourself fitting into all that? Because there's so many now doing this. Become an entrepreneur because it's easy to get money. And that didn't happen in Wall Street. Welcome back to Meet the Drapers. Today, it's all about Bitcoin, the blockchain, cryptocurrencies, and it's going to be pretty interesting. We have some great entrepreneurs here. They're all trying new things, and a lot of them are Bitcoin and blockchain oriented. We all have very different views. Holly, what do you think of cryptocurrencies? What is it? You are really putting me on the spot. I, I, I can't even visualize them. I picture them in my mind's eye, like they, they look like dollar hold. bills. We, we do have Tim's this picture. Of them. <laughs> I've never Only paid for helps. anything um, with them, but to um, your knowledge, you, you may have. What? Sometimes when you pay, if you pay for something in another country you pay it in fiat currency, they will move the money much faster, much more efficiently in if. cryptocurrency, in Bitcoin, go to another country, and then come down in that other currency. I remember <laughs> years ago, my brother, you, gave me a Bitcoin for Christmas, and I had no idea what it was or anything about it. You set up a wallet for me, you said, on the, mm -hmm. on the World Wide Web, and um, <laughs> and I let it lost language. It. And yeah, I have no idea how to even find and my Bitcoin. It. Yeah, and I lost it. <laughs> then and your if, son, if my prediction, Adam, my new prediction is right, you just walked away from a quarter of a million dollars. But don't <laughs> sweat it. I know, it's I've, just, I've been wrong before. Believe me, it's broken my heart and many <laughs> caused many sleepless nights, especially after your son Adam did a little tutorial to all of the relatives explaining what a Bitcoin is so that now I actually know it by flipping pancakes. He did it with pancakes, so. He's um, good with pancakes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, I just and Dad, how about pancakes you? Pancakes from what? Yeah. just a few minutes ago. Let Were me you tell thinking you about of those Bitcoin? Pancakes. Tell us what you think of Bitcoin. Well, you know, I really don't understand the whole thing and got uh, involved quite a bit later than you and I still don't own any. But it is obviously gaining uh, strength all over the world. Well, what advice did you give to Adam when he said he was going to go all in on Bitcoin? Don't do it, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> dollars. Stick with dollars. With George Washington on there. <laughs> uh, you're going to see who Adam is. And he, um, he is a big proponent on Bitcoin, and he was one of the first. He's a venture capitalist, and he's been very successful in a lot of ways, even though he's your son. <laughs> no, he's they, your people can success. overcome big barriers. <laughs> Learn this. Know that you can overcome any kind of barrier. Even, no matter, even if father. you have a father, it's, it's a little out there. <laughs> so, it's about Bitcoin. And we have a guest judge today who is one of the great experts in Bitcoin. This is, this is Sonny Singh, and he is gonna come join the Drapers for our unusual television show. Great. So Sonny, welcome to Meet the Drapers. Hey, Sonny. <laughs> Sonny. Hello, Sonny. Well, very much. <laughs> So uh, tell us about BitPay and what it what it does. BitPay is the largest processor of Bitcoin in the world. We allow companies like Microsoft, even nonprofits like the American Red Cross, to accept Bitcoin on their websites. All the hard stuff because there are there are all the regulators in all the different countries of the world, and they are all getting in the way of you making it so that you can transfer a payment in Bitcoin to a payment in fiat of some sort, or whatever it is. The currencies that are in the living in the past, right. still <laughs> using some political force. If you happen to have any open. dollars in your wallet, give them to me, since <laughs> <laughs> they're worthless. <laughs> this exactly. stuff is junk. <laughs> Thank you. There you go, there you go, there you go. Here, there's more. <laughs> this program is Live it up. to be worthwhile. <laughs> this is a wealthy day for me. 
Oh, and that's you. for all that you've done for me, Father. <laughs> We're even. You're probably right. 200 bucks. <laughs> there it is. Totally right. Okay, let's bring on our first entrepreneur, but first let's see what's happening behind the scenes. Hi, I'm George Buechner, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Pocketful of Quarters. At Pocketful of Quarters, we try to make gaming better for players. It started when my dad was telling me about cryptocurrency when I was coming home from school. At the time, I was frustrated because whenever I quit a game, I lose the coins, and the coins are stuck in that game. There's not many young uh, entrepreneurs, but I think that anyone can make a company or uh, solve their problems if they really put their mind to it. I'm just most excited about getting uh, our idea out there and getting some more players and just people who want to get involved. I'm really excited to get to meet the Drapers, and I hope that this will really help Quarters get off the ground even more. Welcome to Meet the Drapers. Give us your pitch. I was frustrated whenever I quit a game, because that meant I lost all my coins, hard work, time, and effort. With Quarters, you'll be able to use one coin in all your games. We have a great team, and I've raised 350000 in our pre-sale. Our mission is to make gaming better for players. Join us and make this a reality. Terrific. So tell me how this works. How do I get quarters? So quarters, you can buy four quarters for a dollar. And then these quarters can be used online in any game on our platform. So it's just, hey, I, I put down a dollar. I get four quarters. I can now use those quarters to go play video games online. Yep. And also, we're planning to do some casual esports. So you can ante how many quarters you want to bet in a way in that game. To bet against each other yeah. when you're playing. So is this sort of a digital currency? You're it would be a coin in the game. So you buy the coin with dollars wherever you want. So in-game for... purchasing, essentially. Yes. Let's take a step back. How old are you, actually? Yeah. <laughs> what am I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, what's going on? How old is it? <laughs> sure, I'm 12, and I'm going into seventh grade at Greenwich Country Day. Good. 12-year-old Good from school that got you doing this. The Wink of Us twins went there. George H.W. Bush went there. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, who's a Rookie of the Year contendant in basketball, went there. Are you... Um, in school? Actually, the Wink of Us twins are the ones that wear my eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. What? Fantastic. <laughs> I, hope they're part of, I hope they're part of your pre-sale. Yeah. <laughs> you said you got $400,000. 350000 350000 Yeah, um, uh, Michelle Fan invested. Also, Chris Cross, who's been the game designer for three billion dollar gaming franchises. Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, and God of War. Is there somebody with you on your team working? It's over 12? 13. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... In the teens. Yeah, so the, the two people I just mentioned are advisors and Michelle's an investor. My dad's the CTO. What's your dad's background, is he in this? Uh, my dad is a venture capitalist and hedge fund. How is it? How is it having your dad work for you? <laughs> <laughs> I've been having. I've, I've got him doing the same thing. My dad works for me too. It works pretty well, right? Yeah. They do a lot of work, and they just, you know, they don't yeah, expect we too don't much. Get paid. Oh, you just got paid. Yeah. <laughs> Three hundred dollar bills. Oh, you're right. Who who wrote the code? My dad and we use a side chain uh, that's created by um, a man who actually lives in India named Janti. Now, now, as you know, digital currency for the video game space is very big, especially esports gaming. I'm an investor in Unicorn UKG, which is backed by Mark Cuban for esports gaming. There's Wax, which is Opskins, has their own token too for the Steam platform and all that. How do you see yourself fitting into all that? Because there's so many now doing this, actually. It's a great fit. Most of these other currencies are either developer-focused or, like you said, more esports-focused. We're the universal gaming token that's player-focused. So our goal is to make gaming better for players. Is it working now? Uh, so Can I go buy some quarters and start playing games? So the uh, smart contracts are launched. We're not planning to fully launch for a month or two. <laughs> when you looked at tokens, though, what about, did you think about just using a, your, a Bitcoin token or Ethereum-based one? You said you're using a side chain. How, what made you decide which one? Um, so that we're basing ours off ERC-20. Oh, you're using ERC-20, okay. So uh, if the price of quarters was to fluctuate, that would make it so people would be holding on to it. And then it's not really a gaming currency, it's more of like an investing currency. So quarters are always 25 smart. cents. Oh, and then smart. you can't sell them back as a player. So then you can do use like anteing and stuff like that. Was this... 
originally your idea? Yeah, so my dad, we were coming over from school, he was explaining to me cryptocurrency. And yeah. then I was frustrated because whenever I quit a game, I'd lose all my coins. So then we created this. It started off as a hobby, and then it took off when we went to a crypto meetup and we got interviewed. And then like Michelle Fan, Criss Cross, and Devo Harris, who's a three-time Grammy Award winner, winner, also reached out to us. And yeah, it's just blown up. Love and and, and then you got to be on Meet the Draper. Yeah, I know, it's great. <laughs> and I don't know how many people you have in your company, but I'll tell you, they sent the best salesman we've seen. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with the that. Thank you. Salesman we've seen all day. <laughs> and, and what happens if you actually get funding? How would you eventually run the company? Do you have eighth grade coming up? I, seventh, seventh, seventh grade coming up. That's a big year. You can't miss it. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's working really well because I'm really good with my homework management. So believe The most homework I've come out with like from school. You can ask my dad if you don't believe I me. believe you. It's 10 I... minutes because I just do it all during study halls. Are you better in math or English? Math. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not, uh. not surprised. <laughs> do you play any sports? Yeah, I play football, tennis, skiing, I run. Wow, multi. Where do you find the time? Uh, well, to what do about esports? Do you play any esports? Well, I play video games. I don't. I'm not good enough to be an esports player. Got do you e watch esports? Yeah. So you go. You got a Twitch? Yeah, I got a Twitch account. Yeah. Wait, what great. does that mean? Twitch? Twitch, you you watch Twitch play. TV and you can watch it. <laughs> and I stream. Play video games. Paul, you would love it. You would that, love it. And I stream. Oh, right. Doing it. I stream. <laughs> You and you stream? I just started. Oh, so you're a part. Oh my yeah. gosh! So he's a streamer. This is this is this a big, is big deal. time. You got a lot of great things going on. You on are platform. You're on to a great successful career. We're all. I am very excited. Yeah, I don't hey, think that don't, don't, we'll have to consult the the crystal, uh, crystal ball. ball. That's true. <laughs> is your parents here? Yeah, my dad's over there. Great. Hey, hey, no come bad. on out here. Yeah. Come on out here. Yeah. Hey, hey, very good. <laughs> he so, doesn't dress very well compared to you. Much, much yeah. better image. Supposed to be here. Company, what's it, company dress what's code. it like working for your son? He's great. He sees things really clearly. Um, so it, it's, it's terrific. Has he threatened to fire you? Yeah, no, we did the, the, the sort of the bedtime for you know, more points, sort of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be great. You're going to learn a lot and you're going to make a fortune. I think. <laughs> yeah. Quarters. And all those quarters, what are you going to do with all those quarters? Play games. <laughs> Very good. Terrific. Thank you Thank both you. so much Thank for you. coming on to Meet the Drake. Oh my gosh, the handshake <laughs> is unbelievable. <laughs> I think I was surprised and they played kind of like the cute game for a second and then and they started asking a lot of good questions. Bill even went to say that they're all going to give me thumbs up. What mark are you asked for? Maybe I smile a little too much if that's possible. Is that how it normally goes? In your mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> to be honest, yeah. 90% of the time, unless they already know about me, then they don't usually do that. I hope I'm the next Jim Draper because he's really successful. Tim Draper, watch out, I'm coming for you. <laughs> so now let's see what we all thought of quarters before we do that i just want to ask each of you what, what did you sell when you were 12. <laughs> when i was 12 bobby frick my next door neighbor and i decided we would sell horse chestnuts and i collected all the big box full of horse chestnuts <laughs> and we went and sold them thinking you know they were edible <laughs> 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 and, and we said, these are great chestnuts. Huh? We sell them for a dollar a dozen. And some people would buy, but very few. Well, I sold, um, I sold apples. We, we had an apple tree, and I, I picked all the apples, and I brought them to the end of the driveway, and I sat out there for the, pretty much, I thought, the entire summer. And at the very end, our next-door neighbor's mother came over and said, so how much did you make? And I went, eight dollars. <laughs> this is the whole summer. She said, well, who helped you? 
I said, well, once in a while, this guy came over and once in a while somebody else and somebody else and she said okay and she took the eight dollars she gave one to each of them oh no <laughs> and gave one to me and took two for herself what i realized that that was my first experience with socialism oh my god <laughs> 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 How about you? in seventh grade i was 12 years old and i was trying to sell kit kats because we had them lying around the house the old chocolate bar <laughs> So I take a bunch of them to school and sell them for like 25 cents because there was no margin cost. The problem was I ended up eating the like 90% of them actually. Yeah. <laughs> so then I would start buying them, but then I'd start eating more and I ended up losing money and the whole thing fell but apart in like a couple wait. days. Yes. So about four days of trying, it didn't work out. I'm still trying to have a successful business. It's been a lot, a lot of failure so yeah. far. <laughs> Polly, how about you? My sister, you're also your sister, and I created a summer camp for kids. Oh, I remember. We just heard recently from one of the girls that that was one of the high points of her childhood was coming to our summer camp where Becky and I were like, what are we going to do with them today? Uh, <laughs> throw them in the pool. It's okay. <laughs> anyway, this was a 12-year-old that blows us yeah. all away. Yeah, that's the um, point. And I think the <laughs> vibes the coming ball. off the crystal ball are so yeah, strong. We yeah. I think we're ball. just going to vote. Yeah. Okay, okay, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around. Uh, Boom! Whoa! <laughs> to blew <laughs> us away. Uh -huh. <laughs> he really Eight did. thumbs. That's a record. Eight yeah. Record <laughs> number of thumbs here on the Drapers. Okay, let's bring on the next entrepreneur. But before we do, let's see what's happening behind the scenes. Hi, I'm Taylor, founder of Focusmate. I was talking to one of my clients, Jake. He called me up because he had an investor presentation just a couple weeks away and he was way behind. I worked as an executive coach and I got to see this huge array of things that even really high performers struggle with, including just procrastination and not following through. He actually asked me, would you be willing to call me a couple times a day or text me to check up on me? I couldn't do that. The first time I was working remotely, I struggled to do anything before noon. But I said, you know what? I have been putting off this blog post for months. Why don't we just get on Skype together tomorrow and I'll sit there with you. I'll write my blog post, you'll work on your investor presentation. Both of us just got in the zone right away. We dialed in for two hours. Just even the end of that first interaction, it was really clear to both of us that we had stumbled on something that was just incredibly effective and that other people could find value in as well. We are changing the world. We're helping unlock human potential. And I, I really believe that you can unlock a person's potential that has untold impact. And we aim to reach hundreds of millions of people. Welcome to Meet the Drapers. Give us your pitch. Hi, I'm Taylor, founder of Focusmate. Simply put, we're productivity software. But really what we're building is the digital workplace. Let's take a step back and talk about two scary mega trends underlying our business. Number one, we're distracted. As soon as we're off camera, all of us will probably reach for our phones. And number two, we're working alone. Nearly one in three workers are now predominantly remote, which means we're losing the things that the office used to provide. The accountability of having to show up, the brain chemical that we get from human connection, it's called oxytocin. We literally need it to survive and we're not getting enough. So these are the problems that Focusmate solves. We've carefully crafted an interaction where you and another user sit side by side, remotely over a video call while you each do your work. 96% of our users say Focusmate improves their productivity at least 50%. Now imagine if each of us were 50% more productive. Imagine the impact that would have on your life, on your companies, and on the world. Thank you. Would that be someone who's in your field? It's almost like a study buddy on demand. We've created a community of people who are interested in being held accountable. And we've standardized the protocol. 50 minute appointment, when you show up, you each commit to what you're working on, you write it down, and then you get to work. They could just do this by Skype if they wanted, right? They could. And in fact, some of our users, that's how we found them. They were DIYing it, right? They were on Reddit, finding accountability partners, Facebook groups trying to find and, this stuff. And you think it's going to bubble up that way. You don't think that you need to sell to the corporations and have them go top down and say, yeah, because you guys are all remote. Here's how you're going to work yeah. with each other. We actually see several huge markets for this. And one of them is B2B. And if any of you guys are involved in ed tech or you know, future sure, of education, right? right? The big problem in that space is nobody finishes the courses. And we're able to solve that problem as well. So you're going to do both? 
You're going to do top down and you're going to do this bubbling so, up thing. We're, we're confident that we can hit the consumer productivity market, the B2B productivity, online education, even corporate training. Are you, we need to do some pilots. Are you going to keep the sound on all the time or are you going to have like a knock knock? That was the question. Like, can if you, you walk sound, us through what would happen? You're sitting down at your computer and someone's face is right there in the corner while you're doing yeah, your let work. Me, um, let me show you guys how it looks. Sure. Yeah, I'm not often speechless. This is the first time I'm actually speechless trying to figure out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I can't imagine this yet. Oh, I do it all the time, so this is easy for <laughs> yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, let's say you're on your laptop, right? Mm -hmm. And you're writing a blog post, right? So here you are. Most of your computer is what you're working on, but you also have this accountability partner who's there with you. And you're saying things like, do you think I should write such and such? And the guy goes, I don't know. I think you shouldn't. Is that or right? Is there is it... any interaction so, about so the actual work? A way to imagine it. Sometimes when you run, you yeah. get a friend to go with you. Yeah. And you know what, you, you might be chatting, you might not, but you're not talking about the running. Right. You get the running buddy because, you know what, if it's raining, you can't just stay in bed. You've committed. We're different when we're around is your other background people. psychology or what's your background? Yeah, so actually my background is executive coaching. Then the interesting thing about my coaching practice, it's mostly high performers. And yet what I found is still a lot of these people really struggle to just follow through on, on their commitments and the stuff that they really want to do. But just to back up a minute, I would go to my computer because I have some work to do. I would not like that guy looking at me all the That's time. Kind of how I yeah, but what if it were <laughs> make what if it really were uncomfortable? What if it were Pitch Johnson? One of the most delightful experiences that I had in venture capital was working with this extremely good man and great manager. I wouldn't want him. <laughs> really? No way. I think most people would just like to settle in on their computer, go at their own speed, not have somebody looking at them. I, I could easily see doing this with Frank Creer. No problem. We would have, as, as long as he keep his head down. <laughs> but I'm more worried about the, the screen space. That's pretty valuable. I have to, like, go to Word, go to Excel, go to oh, whatever, yeah, yeah, go yeah. to my email, go oh, to the that's web all on one to make side. something that's happen. All on the way. I want to hit on Bill's point about do you really want to do this? People go to co-working spaces, not because somebody is standing over them with a, you know, going like this saying you should work, but we kind of know. Like, I have to get dressed in the morning and I have to look presentable and I have to sort of do something when I'm at the co-working space. So we're already doing this behavior in the real world, and this is just a simple adaptation of that in a digital environment. Who's writing the code for this? My CTO, Mike. Mike has 17 years of software engineering experience. Early in his career, he was a key contributor to the Razer Surface 3 before getting into startup plan. Who's paying? We've made an offer to 127 users, and we've converted 65 of those to customer. If you have a channel for your company, if you want to have an unlimited number of people in your tribe, those start to be premium features. Is the product out there? Can the I product out there, yep, focusmate.com. Oh, terrific. How many users do you have? About 220 daily active users, about 1,200 monthly active users. That's about a 20% ratio. Yeah, um, they should be coming back more than that. Either they're into it or they're not. It, that's exactly what we found, actually. The top 20% of our users, they're booking an average of 11 50-minute appointments a week, which is about nine hours that's on the awesome. site. Well, this is terrific. Well, thank you. Thanks thank so you guys, much for much. coming in to meet the Drapers. <laughs> Great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Bye. Great to meet Good you. Luck. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a powerhouse family, with all of them there, it was definitely surprising how much energy I needed to bring to own the space. When everyone's got something to say at once, there was a lot more that I felt I could share. One of the things that's tricky about our product is it either instantly clicks for people or it doesn't. And so when I go into an environment like this, I sort of, I count on having a couple of people who are just, oh yeah, that makes total sense, or I've done something like that. I definitely appreciated Tim coming out and saying, you know, explaining and saying, I get it. I would definitely see myself doing this. So I, I'm definitely grateful that I had a couple of people that got it, but you know, that's, it's, it's always a challenge. My belief is that if we could all do our best work, there's really no problem in the world that we couldn't solve. And that's my personal mission, that's my goal with Focusmate. If that resonates with you, and I'd love to invite you to invest in Focusmate. So let's see what the judges think about Focusmate. Sonny, why don't you start? I mean, the 12-year-old, I got what he was doing. <laughs>
<laughs> this one I didn't quite get my arms around. That some guys can be sitting on a window coaching me what to say or not coaching me. It's similar to ed tech though, which is getting pretty popular, where you have Serena Williams coach you for an hour on tennis or something like that. So I can see where it's going. Yeah, I think it's a little different from that. I think his idea is that you just find somebody, maybe a girlfriend, to study with. I hate the idea, <laughs> yeah. to be honest with you. But I don't have a girlfriend at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> He's available. <laughs> I think there it's very random who your choice is that you're studying with. I can totally see this in a high school way, even in a college way, even in a graduate school way. For me, I'm with you. Sometimes I have to go to a hotel room just to focus myself. So the idea of focusing because of someone else it's anathema to me. However, that is not the way of the world now. I think that people around the world are now getting so caught up in this world yeah. and the computer world. And then if they're at a desk job and they have to program or they have to just keep their heads down and stay at their desk, they get lonely. And if I were a corporate CEO and I knew I had a whole ton of people that were kind of getting lonely, I would say, let's get this thing in. If I were a corporate guy, and, I'd use it as a way of monitoring my and, workers. And I think online education, 93% of the people who start these courses drop off. If there was somebody on the other side kind of watching and going, hey, I see you there, you're doing it, that might actually make a difference. Well, the difference in our opinions indicate that there are some people that would like that. Let's go to the crystal, the crystal ball. ball. That's going to decide and us. Let's, so you're let's right. see what we focus. all help think. Here. <laughs> okay, are we ready? Okay. Now, we're the judges of the show, but you, the audience, is also a judge of the show. And know that you can go to meetthedrapers.com and you can invest in Focus Me. So, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around. Where are we going? Two down and one and three quarters up. Having some down, some up is usually a good sign for these companies. So, let's go on to our next guest. And before we do, let's see what's going on behind the curtain. I'm Wilson Hunter. I'm founder and CEO of Cardboard Life. Uh, before this, I spent hundreds of miles on the road doing a sales job, and really I wanted to stop doing that and really follow my passion. I'm a huge nerd. Uh, I play the game Magic the Gathering professionally. So now, right now, live streaming video games is huge, but in physical games, there's a lot of missing information. We're totally revolutionizing an experience in a way they currently uh, interact with games and play games. Deciding to quit something that was really stable and start this and bootstrap our first product, uh, it, was, it was pretty stressful. I really pursued this not because I have any startup experience, but because I'm really passionate about the product. This is obviously an awesome experience. I mean, everybody knows the Drapers. Um, I would have never really imagined that I'd have this opportunity to pitch to them, so really pumped about it. Welcome to Meet the Drapers. Give us your pitch. I'm Wilson Hunter. I'm the founder and CEO of Cardboard Live. I'm a huge nerd, which is going to be very obvious in this presentation. <laughs> so we are revolutionizing the way that non-traditional card and board game players and fans engage with their hobbies online. I'm going to hand out these cards to you all if you want to pass them around. That's an example of one of oh, the Oh, these are magic cards. That's right. So right now, live streaming of video games is huge. But when you're streaming a physical game, it brings in new complexities into the issue. For example, blurry cards on the screen, it may be difficult to see them. And missing game information, such as player hands or the contents of a player's deck. Poker popularity increased over 2,000% when they added a digital overlay to the screen that showed the missing contents of player hands. We're doing something similar for non-traditional games, but we're using image recognition, which allows users to hover over key items in a stream, and they can even purchase those items. So with over 100 million collectible game players worldwide and a $1 billion secondary market of trading cards, there's a significant opportunity to provide the shopping solution that integrates with a unique entertainment experience. I actually play Magic the Gathering on the Pro Tour, and I started this company because it was a problem engaging with my favorite hobby online. 
So I invite you all to help me innovate and revolutionize the digital experience for physical card games. Terrific. How do you help this experience? So usually players like to watch these games on a computer or on their phone, and they can actually hover over individual items, and using image recognition, it expands the image, and they can read the item. Because it's a collectible game, many players watch this because they would like to play the game themselves. So they can actually click on the item live in a stream and purchase it for themselves. So are you selling the software to the other market, to the game sites? We're an extension that can go on top of something like Twitch, right. but we're creating our own platform right now because we would like to integrate marketplaces with the ability to do this so that they can buy and sell cards through the stream. Are you gonna show them how by doing Magic the Gathering first and then move on to other card games and other games? Absolutely. So Magic Magic the Gathering is our go-to-market game, and it's a very influencer-based market. So sort of like basketball with LeBron James encouraging people to buy his merchandise, it's very similar. What's your background? I'm a marketing guy. I actually started a, a yearbook design and sales business when I was 21. It was just a hustle job. But really, you know, playing professional cards is uh, my passion and what I do on the side. I went to Spain for a, a tournament in February. Oh, wow. What's the prize money in a tournament like that in Spain or something like that? So that tournament's about half a million dollars. It's lower than poker because there's no buy-in, and that's really the key with this is this is marketing for the creators of the game and for people that sell the game pieces. It's why there's a different opportunity than your traditional deck of 52 because no one's trying to sell those cards. How do you play this game? Yeah, yeah so it's sort of like <laughs> poker meets chess. And it's complicated because there's over 20,000 unique cards and they all do different things that interact with each other in unique ways. What's the number two card game behind Magic? Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon are a couple big yeah, ones. Card. And so are people going to bet on this? Because of some recent law changes in the U.S., we're really exciting about opportunities is to actually bet on hands uh, as a viewer. You're already doing this, right? Yeah, we're early How many stage. people are actually watching you play this game? Right now, some of the tournaments get around a million unique viewers per event. I was one of the players that was featured four times in one of the last Pro Tours. So far, our first tournament is actually being streamed this upcoming weekend. We expect about 50,000 people to interact with our tool. Is your product already built then? We've already built our first product. We have about 10,000 uh, user pre-signups who are interested in it. And the secret sauce is the ability to see the cards, is that correct? Yeah, the image recognition is a big part of it. Another part of it, sort of in the background, there are buttons that you can actually see the contents of the player decks. So if I were going to use your software, I would need a camera pointing down at cards, a camera pointing at me. It's an extra piece of equipment for people. It's pretty complicated. Yeah. That's right. So we have an onboarding process for individuals who want to stream. All that really requires very simply is like a $50 Logitech camera, and we can help them out with the rig for that. In general, though, most of the customers are hobby shops that already want to stream. And then you have larger tournament series that actually have full production teams that stream the tournaments. And this is really technology that and you do you get paid by winning? Or? We'll be making a fee on the sale of cards through the stream, as well as your traditional freemium-based model that allows people to actually subscribe to content creators that they like. Yep. This is Twitch for card games. Exactly. That's where, right. Where are you at in terms of funding and who's your team and all that? Yeah, so we've just done a, a pre-seed raise and bootstrap so far. We've raised about 170000 My co-founder and CTO has experience at Microsoft and Amazon. Uh, he's over in China. Uh, we also have a team of developers. How big is this market? The hobby games market is about $10 billion, but that includes like competitive board games. I mean, one way to measure the market size, though, would be how big are video games, all video games, and how big is Twitch? What's and Twitch? All video games. It's the one where you watch the people play video games. Oh, watch. that's that one that we Amazon just talked about. Just yeah. Asked that yeah, I asked it's it before. The <laughs> <laughs> A different way of looking at this is actually the number of players, because Twitch didn't build their platform on the sale of video games. It's actually about the number of players who want to play and use it. Twitch was bought by Amazon for a billion dollars in 2014, but their valuation is approaching about $20 billion now. Amazon has purchased game streaming company Twitch.tv for close to $1 billion. So, you know that really hurts me because we were early investors in Twitch. Okay. <laughs> oh. And we sold it for a billion going, yay, this is great. And now it's worth 20 times. Oh, this, yeah. is a, this is about this specific game. You're starting with this game? We're starting with this specific game. We're also branching out to board games after that. Like so. Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. Do, do you right. see the... So the, how does this game work? <laughs> you have a new family right here. He wants to play with you. Right. <laughs> he did it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Before we ask you another question you've already answered. <laughs> yeah. Welcome right, to right. Meet the Drapers. Thank, Thank you so I, much I for coming. Thank you. 
Uh, I think it went well. Really, they seem to sort of go into understanding the opportunity, which is really cool because I got to talk a little bit about what we've been doing and our progress. And I think Tim seemed like he was really into it. Um, he uh, understood a lot about Twitch. I mean, it's just cool to see all the stuff that's happening out here. Um, really, I've just been working on my startup in a lonely nook on the computer uh, with some other people you know, around the world. So we really want people that are passionate about this space to invest in our company. We'll totally change the way that they currently uh, interact with games and play games. So let's see how the judges felt about Cardboard Live. And just know that you are the viewer and you can vote up, down, or you can invest. So, uh, Sonny, why don't we start with you? What did you think of Cardboard Live? Yes, yeah, so I personally don't play Magic the Gathering, but as an investor, I'm looking to make a return on my money. And this space, whether it be the video game space, the card playing space, as we've seen from Twitch, has a very loyal following and a very rabid user base, actually. And he's a professional Magic Gathering player, so I assume he knows the bright people in the space. Take a look at that game. We watched Hudson Hunter defeats Derek Sheets one game to zero. It's rocking and rolling here. So he develops the right product that solves a pain point. It'll catch on, actually. This would be one. With the Amazon, exception. Twitch would I mean, we all that. thought Twitch, no one understood Twitch at all, with the exception of you who invested in it. And now it's Actually, I didn't understand yeah, it either, but I did it. I was giving you the benefit of the doubt now. <laughs> Holly, what'd you think? Well, I'm taking everybody else's word for it, that this is an important, interesting platform. But, but it's not something that I would ever think to invest in. Dad, what do you think? The market is huge, you know, if you get the right game. And I like him, and I think I would go thumbs up on it. Again, don't know Again, much about it. Again, need to talk to the crystal ball. Yeah. One thing that's really funny before <laughs> it was, you know, I'm a jock, and everybody was like, you're cool. Now it's like, I'm a jock, and everybody's like, ooh, I want a nerd. <laughs> okay, let's go live. We're going to gather around the magic ball, and I've got mine. Oh, good, I got mine. It just hit me. Okay, well, here we go. It's <laughs> thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around. This is a... Four, oh, wow, this three and three prime. quarters up. A, this is all the way up just because I'm going for, from peer... Peer pressure. From peer, peer pressure. Not necessarily Don't pressure, take peer but pressure. no, it's not pressure. It's peer... Peer admiration. Peer admiration. From, 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 oh, nerd, nerd admiration. Nerd, nerd, ad nerd admiration. Nerd admiration. No, Good. None of us ever played the game, actually, so that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have actually played Magic the Gathering yeah. one time. Yep. You did? Yep. And it is... You do. do you, it's interesting. It's like a game of uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, so you, you can vote, you can invest in Cardboard Live, so do as you will. Hey, now check out my interview on the blockchain for this week. Should be awesome, always is fun, <laughs> where we have some amazing guests, and you get to hear about it now. I'm here with Kavita Gupta. She is the co-founder of Consensus Ventures, whole business around Ethereum. So tell me about you. You are awesome. Thank you. You <laughs> created Consensus. You are Joe. How did it all happen? How did it start? In Napa, over a drink where I started telling him that he has created a completely wrong crypto assets after three hours completely converting and changing my tune and saying, <laughs> <laughs> okay, there has to be a hybrid model, maybe we combine the traditional VC with investing into tokens. So by the end of it, he's like, you know what, you have so many complaints and you have so many ideas, just come and run it. And that's uh, it. I had a lot of trouble trying to understand <laughs> all about Ethereum. They said then, well, then just buy the token. And I didn't really understand what that was. How did you come around? The application of technology is what got me super excited. We saw a project which was creating sovereign identity for refugees at the border of Greece. When and the doctor in Syria is going to put his degree before crossing the border. If he cannot be a doctor, he can still be a nurse and not an Uber driver. And I was like blown over. And that's how I started following the technology. And I think the technology took me to the crypto world. And that made me realize this utility tokens and security tokens and ethers and Ripple and everything in the world. What got me very excited was these smart contracts. <laughs> and that would mean that I could have people invest in my fund in Bitcoin. And then I could invest in companies mm -hmm. in Bitcoin. Yeah. And then they 
could pay their employees and the suppliers in Bitcoin. And there's no accounting. You don't <laughs> need an account for the whole thing. <laughs> Tell me how you think about investing in these these crypto products. You you guys do a lot of this work. Luckily, it's been now 13 and a half months since we launched Consensus Ventures. And it's been 14 companies down and it's still somehow working in the market. And the market has got matured a lot in the last eight months with the type of entrepreneurs coming out, technology mm -hmm. coming out. At the end of the day, if it works out, I did really good. So let's just run with it. So what is it that gets you interested? The product vision. And if they can keep on talking about tokens, then they have not really thought about the product. And if they come and they tell us, this is how we have thought about, then you have my attention. If they don't bring tokens in first 15 minutes of the pitch, then it is something we definitely have to go deeper. I'm always asking the question, after you've done the ICO, who's going to buy those tokens? Who wants them? You know, is there a real marketplace for the tokens? Someone is going to want to go in there and buy them. And that has been a very tough litmus test. When do you see a massive adoption that people like you and me would be buying, let's say, our movie tickets or incentivized models around day-to-day -day life on smart contracts? You know, and I'm always a little early in testing things and getting them going. And we at Draper University, we take Bitcoin. In fact, that has really paid off. We take Ether and we we got for rent too oh, wow. at Hero City. We worked out how to do it. I get these emails for 10 Bitcoin, a car, a boat for 100 Bitcoin and a house for 1,000 Bitcoin. And, and there's also, you can buy one bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken <laughs> <laughs> that you can only buy with Bitcoin. It's the Bitcoin oh, bucket. Wow. Over the course of the next four years, we're going to see it more and more and more, and people aren't even going to think about it. But when is smart contract going to come into it without just like the whole speculative currency market? That is going to be so much fun. Yeah. We're going to do deals. <laughs> In fact, we should do a smart contract right here on the show. Let's do it. Let's do a smart <laughs> contract. What's your favorite sports team? Team India, but like Okay, and who's the rival? I think Australia. We'll bet one ether. Okay, done. And whatever happens, the other person gets two ether. Done. Okay, and we'll build that into software and we'll have this happen. Oh my God. Okay. okay I'm getting it. Sure. Okay, okay, here we go. Awesome. Okay, you got the field. So that may have cost me an ETH. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. Well, now we got to make another bet on Modi versus the field. We were expecting you in India last month on an innovation blockchain I came platform. by Skype. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I'm coming next year. I'm, I want to see the filming of a Bollywood show. Done. So whatever we do, that's we'll do one a of the movie. things we have to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will do an amazing Shah Rukh Khan movie shooting. That sounds perfect. Since you've come a guest on Meet the Drapers, we always adopt. You are now an adopted Draper. Oh, so welcome to the thank family. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That wraps it up. So now let's talk about the day we've had. What a day. What a we, day. So yes, many what a show. Entrepreneurs from 12 years old on up. <laughs> In order, I would say the 12 year old ranks one. the highest. Number one. Yeah, that's right. It was a great day. It yeah. was wonderful entrepreneurs, interesting ideas. Very creative judges. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> the judges, really. Judges stole the show. They were already. glamorous. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think being an angel investor in a lot of companies in Silicon Valley, this was outside my sweet spot of, you know, Magic the Gathering, yeah. right? 12 year old kids, although that one was a little bit crypto, where I understood that a little bit. And then Focus Me, which is about how to pay attention, which I have ADD, so I can't do that at all. <laughs> so it's very interesting to me. Which actually, that would mean you would be a real. I know, but I couldn't pay attention to the problem. It was too <laughs> busy. me. That was the problem. They'd be walking over and you with a whip, and yeah. you'd be kind of going, well, no, got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Sorry, wait, wait, where are we going? So it was a great learning experience for me to see these different verticals that I would normally not have access to, actually, and see these entrepreneurs with a passion and help me learn about it, actually. So I was very excited about that. Any screenplays you can make about this? Yeah, totally. About the 12-year-old entrepreneur. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Or how about about a ga two gamers that fall in love with each other, there as has happened in how real life, that? as we well know. Um, yeah, we actually have a, a cousin. She's She had a big following on Twitch, and she fell in love with another Twitcher. That's... Twitch. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs>
Twitch means Tinder. It's amazing. That's but a good that story. But that would be a really interesting screenplay. I mean, everything. All of the ones today I thought were kind of... Well, Sonny, you've been on Meet the Drapers. You've been a guest judge. And now we're adopting you. You are <laughs> you now a, a Draper. And so welcome to the family. We love you. We're so thrilled. Is mixed. We're so thrilled. <laughs> Thank you very Welcome much. Welcome to the family. Bring it in here, baby. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a family affair. Thank you very hey, much. Hey, great to have you. It's very refreshing. Thank you guys very much. You're a wonderful family. Terrific. Well, that was fun. Great fun. And, and thank you all for coming and watching and listening and, and investing. And listening. With entrepreneurs and listening to me. <laughs> On Meet, Meet the, the Drivers! Really excited to just share an interview that I just did with Tim Draper, making early investments in things like Hotmail, Skype, Tesla. And we funded Hotmail. I had an opportunity to uh, to see when they told me, hey, we've got web-based email up and running. The early days, 1993, 94. Satya founded Hotmail, which was sold to Microsoft for over $400 million. He's not only one of the world's most prominent venture capitalists, but he's also a huge fan and driving force of blockchain technology and cryptocurrency. Whether it's origin, block is lost or unclaimed. Still in growth, right? Baker, shine, and blockchain.